Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is um, Raymond Long. Um, I'm a software engineer in the uh, Red Hat um, core kernel group. Um, my main responsibility is uh, to maintain the uh, the C group as well as the locking subsystem in the kernel. Um, so today uh, the topic is about the um, the, the news two major new features that are in the upcoming release of well, uh, which is uh, we back off from the upstream kernel. So, uh, and you know that, that within the, the Linux kernel, there are two main features that enable uh, make container possible. The two features are the control group, uh, we usually call it C group, as well as uh, the namespace. Without these two, um, um, we don't we won't have any um, Linux container. And the, the two new features that I'm planning to elaborate a bit more on today is the the new C group mem uh, C group slab memory controller that are introduced in the version five point nine uh, kernel, as well as the the time namespace, which are I think introduced earlier, um, maybe five, six, or seven. Um, and and besides the these two main features, there are also other worthwhile um, important features that um, I, I would briefly talk about. Um, that include that will be included in the the next release of the well kernel. Um, that include the ability to. Um, to limit memory allocation when you are when your um, your memory controller is reaching the, the memory limit, um, and that can have uh, that can try that can avoid the the our memory queue that may sometimes happen if the application within the con container just happen to be using too much memory then is allocated to the container um, and. And also, um, we are now able to account the use of the per CPU memory in uh, in the kernel, as well as the other regular slab memory or pay cache memory. And we also uh, uh, integrate some uh, better wireback control that will help to limit the uh, the number of unexpected hand that can happen because of the um, I/O imbalance inherently in some of the uh, application use cases. So um, before uh, doing deeper, uh, I would like to um, talk about that. Uh, if you know about the control group in the Linux kernel, there are actually two different versions. Uh, there's a V1 version and then the V2 version. The V1 version is what we call the, the legacy um, implementation. And, and then the V2 is the newer one. Um, and most of the new feature um, will go to uh, SQL V2 because this is the one that under active development. Uh, V1 is kind of in the maintenance mode. Um, we try to make sure that nothing breaks, but uh, we are less likely to add new feature into it. And the, the major difference between the two uh, versions is that uh, in SQL V1, um, each different controller can have its own hierarchy. So every controller can have hierarchy that are completely different from, from the other. Um, it appeared, well, from, from the top level, it seems like that can be um, more flexible, but on the other hand, that increase the capacity, uh, especially when you need the coordination between different controller. Um, so that is the main reason why we have a SQL V2. And uh, in SQL V2, the, the major theme is that there is only one unified hierarchy for all the controller that are supported in the V2 mode. So instead of different hierarchy for each controller, we have one single hierarchy for all the controller that are running in SQL uh, V2 mode. By the way, um, a controller can be running in either V1 or V2, but not both. So uh, when you set up the system, you have to choose whether you want a given controller to be used in V1 or V2. And 
currently, um, I think most distribution are still using V1 as a default um, because this is what people used to be using in the past. But um, the trend is over time, more and more um, distro will, will switch to V2 as the default uh, because uh, this is where the, the new feature are, are coming from. And so if, uh, if you want to get some new feature, they are only in V2, but not in V1. The only way is you switch it to, to Super V2 instead of V1. Okay, um, now I talk about the, the new C group uh, slab memory controller. Um, you know, within the kernel, um, besides the, the page cache that are used for um, to caching uh, anonymous memory or also the file, file data, there's also a, another set of kernel memory that are used by all the internal data structure uh, that are created in the kernel. And the the origin, the current implementation, uh, not the current, um, the the old implementation of the slab uh, controller is that whenever you create a new memory SQL, um, you have to create a parallel set of uh, uh, slab cache. So, for instance, you, you want to create a new process, you need a, a task structure in the kernel for each of the new um, new thread or new process that you created in the kernel. And the memory for that structure come from a slab cache um, that are created by uh, uh, when the system set up. And there are many different types of structure uh, in the kernel. Um, and from a look of um, the number of caches available, um, there I the can is around uh, 250 or so um more or less so uh that means that whenever you create a new controller um whenever I create a new uh c group and you try to use the the select cache then you create a parallel set of um of select cache whenever um the process within the container use that uh type of structure or need to create or allocate those um, structure in the kernel and associated with each slab cache um you can see from the diagram that each um each c group have an associated set of slab cache and within a slab cache because of performance reason um the each slab cache has uh, have a type of uh, per node as well as per cpu cache so we have so each CPU that use the um, that they are used within a container, um, it will create a, a cache of usually about uh, a few slab that are dedicated to each CPU as a cache. And but within that those slab, not all the um, available objects are allocated. Some are free waiting to be allocated uh, when the need arises. Um, and because of that, each CPU will kind of uh, hold up a, a number of pages or pages of memory that are aside for that CPU, but not fully utilized. As a result, um, if you if there's a need of create many container or many memory SQL in the system, uh, a lot of memory can get hold up by those uh, slab cache and. It is estimated that um, uh, in, in the modern system, uh, modern distro, like, um, well, about roughly half megabyte of memory we will consume uh, for each of CPU that are used in a given memory SQL, uh, give or take, depending on the, the exact workload you're, that you're running. So that can be quite a lot of memory. So the now uh, I'm done going to talk about the new uh, C group slab memory controller. The major difference between the new uh, controller versus the old one is that um, all the memory C group will share the same set of slab cache. So instead of um, n slab cache for n um, memory C group, now we have a 
single set of select cache shared by all the membership group. But in order to um, manage the accounting of um, the memory allocated to each of the C group, uh, we have we now have a new structure that at a bridge between the, the slab cache and the C group. We call that the object C group structure. So the the object group, the purpose of that structure is to do the the accounting um, of memory that they are dedicated to each of the, the C group. And the way it does that is um, um, in, in, the, in the old controller, um, the, use, the, mem the usage of memory by each of the C group is accounted in, in pages, number of pages that are used by uh, each C group. But with the new um, select controller, it's counting by instead of pages. So, and the pi counting is done in the object C group. So if there, if the number of byte um, accumulate accounted in the object C group reach more than a page, uh, it will the the resulting page number will be um, will be allocated in in another uh, C group structure, and and then the, the object C group is mainly used for keeping keeping track of the number of by the uh, within less than a page. So because uh, each of the kernel data structure, the size actually varies. They vary from uh, as little as eight byte or can be more than um, a page, 4K, 8K, or, and so on. Um, so uh, there are wide variety of range in size of each of the object in the slab cache, depending on what type of object you are going to, to be created. And the object SQL structure, besides maintaining the byte accounting, it also maintains the reference count. Um, so each object in the slab cache, there's an for each object in the slab cache, there's an associate there uh, uh, a way of uh, associate reference that point to the object SQL structure they are currently using it. So if the if a slab has let's say uh, 10 object, then there will be a way of 10 pointer that uh, will be allocated as a, as a reference to point to the, the corresponding object scope structure. So uh, this uh, new scope do have a, a little bit over memory overhead, which will be for each of the uh, object that you need to allocate one pointer for that, uh, to, you know, to check which scope is um, is associated with. So uh, what actually are the benefits of the new slab memory controller? Um, with the new slab controller, um, we tend to use a lot less uh, kernel memory for, for slab. And, and that can save quite a bit of memory when you need to start a lot of um, C memory SQL for instance, uh, when you created a lot of uh, container. And, and the memory reduction is actually uh, more prominent in, in architecture like uh, PowerPC and ARM64 because those uh, architecture currently will support 64K pages. While on a uh, x system, um, the page size is 4K. So, a general rule of thumb is that the smaller the page size, the smaller will be the size of each of a slab because the um, the slab we created is usually um, a, a multiple number of pages, and usually uh, the number is a, a simple power of two. So uh, the smaller the page size, the smaller slab, the, the less memory will be wasted uh, because uh, they are used at the at the cache. For for the CPU or for the for each of the node, and someone had won some benchmark um, on a power CP system that contain that running one pop with twenty container executing some uh, some kind of workload on the two different kernel with the old and the new uh, SQL slab memory controller. So uh, <clears throat> by running that, it, it measure the the amount of the kernel memory that are they are used up by by the by the whole pod and as well as each of the container, and it turned out that um, with the new 
um, memory controller um, the, at the port level, the memory consumption go from uh, that memory is specific to the memory that are used up by the slab cache. Um, and the consumption go from, uh, from three gigabyte to 400 megabyte, which is uh, about more than seven X improvement. And at the container level, that means within each of the, the container, the, the amount of memory used um, was reduced from uh, 112 megabyte to 90 megabyte, which is around six times um, smaller. And also, and actually the, the execution time, they measure also improve uh, a bit um, by 70%. That is uh, quite noticeable um, because of, probably because of the, they have less overhead in start up the, um, uh, the creating of the new uh, slab cache and and that can and also because they use up less memory they less cache footprint and so that can probably the reason why the performance uh, improve a, a bit also so uh, another feature that i want to talk about is uh, time namespace so the the purpose of a time namespace is to virtualize uh, two system cards that are supported by um, the Linux kernel, the card monotonic and also the card boot time. Uh, monotonic time, monotonic card is a card that uh, always increment and you this will never go back. And boot time is just uh, used for accounting the, the the amount of time elapsed since the, the system boot up. Uh, there's another card called card real time is that is used to measure the, the actual wall clock time. Uh, there's no virtual line uh, in, in the time namespace because of the complexity and also um, there's the performance overhead involved you want to virtualize it. And the, and the use case isn't that, um, that, that useful and that's why it isn't, um, the time namespace doesn't support the virtualization of the clock real time. And a new time namespace is created by calling the unshare um, system call with the new con new time flag. And when you when you do the unshare, actually the, the caller itself won't uh, be living in the new uh, time namespace. It's the, the new children that are created that will be that will go to the new time namespace. And <clears throat> the way that the kernel maintain the time uh, the name time namespace is by maintaining an offset to the the kernel internal time. Um, that offset is maintained in what we call a um, uh, VR page that are used that are used by the virtual uh, DSO uh, dynamic share object. Um, they are maintained by kernel and used in user space application. And time namespace support is currently only available for 86 and ARM64. Um, support for the other architecture haven't been um, submitted upstream yet. So, um, so, so these two are the, the ones that are currently supported in time namespace. And actually the, the major motivation of why using, <coughs> adding the time namespace is to allow the monotonic and boot time clock to maintain a consistent value during container migration and checkpoint restore. So that is the reason why we have that, uh, that new feature and, and that is used to support the uh, container. So you can see that all this, <clears throat> all the work upstream uh, are done to, to provide better support for, for the container ecosystem and <clears throat> And that is the uh, the end of my presentation. Um, in the just at the twenty minute mark. So uh, there is one question from uh, our okay. attendees. Is from David. Uh, is there any significant variation in the implementation from X eighty six to ARM sixty five? Maybe you could better understand the context. Uh, oh, is there any? 
question in the Um You can, are you you can find the Q&A such part of the chat. So um, are you referring to time name space or? For time name space, um, the- Yes, David just the replied in the time name space. Yeah, there, there is some similar differences in the implementation. Um, um, they, are, they are all done within the VDSO uh, layer. So uh, um, what they need to do is to create um, a dedicated pages that contain the offset for different time name space. So when you switch to a two, uh, new time name space, uh, you, you kind of swap in the, the other page corresponding to co corresponding to, to that time name space. Um, the actual implementation differ a little bit because um, the time, the architecture specific code for, for, for time management is a little bit different. So they, they have uh, within the, um, each of the arc directory, um, they have their own code to, to manage the, the mapping. But then um, they, they use a common set of core code to handle uh, all, all the rest. There's some, so there are some architecture specific code for each of the architecture and the rest is handled by the common code. 